Thomas and Marina are being supported by Sonia from our Children and Families team after their father passed away earlier this year. We're thrilled that the children have switched on the Christmas tree lights this year at the new hospice for our very special Light Up A Life occasion. A warm welcome to our annual Light Up A Life event. For the first time in our 33 year history, we're hosting this event online. Normally each December, hundreds of you gather at Thames Hospice to remember a loved one who has died. We cannot host gatherings like this just now because of the unusual circumstances we find ourselves in. So in times like these, we're linking up with you where you are in your homes through this online event. We want to link up with as many of you as possible because actually we're all in this together. This has been such a tough year for everyone. This global pandemic has hit hard. It has taken lives and it's left loved ones bereaved. It's also changed everything in our society, our way of life, the world of work and leisure, family life, and our ways of being and just belonging. We applaud the heroic efforts of our NHS, local care homes, all key workers, and those individuals and agencies in local communities have gone out of their way to support our most vulnerable and lonely. But I would also like to give a huge personal thank you to all of our staff and volunteers here at Thames Hospice who have been incredible throughout these difficult times. And it is also important to remember that this has been a significant year for Thames Hospice despite COVID-19. In addition to all the hospice care we always give in serving our local community, we've looked after people with COVID-19 and supported their loved ones throughout. And since October, we're now able to care for even more people at our wonderful new state-of-the-art hospice here at Bray Lake. And this is only because of the unwavering support of all of you who have stood by us in these most challenging of times and helped us to support those who need us most. So in the worst of times, we keep on delivering the very best of our care and support, and we join many others locally and nationally who are doing the very best they can. Thank you. Welcome. In times like these, there is solidarity and support as we link up together. We're in this together, and may we all find some help and some hope in what we share together in this Light Up A Life event. As you can see in your Light Up A Life brochure, there'll be music and songs and poems and reflections. There will be messages from some of our local community representatives and contributions from one or two famous people. You'll also see some of the children we've supported in their families this year and you'll hear something of their stories. Like Thomas, who opened up this event by lighting the Christmas tree lights. And later you'll hear from Lily and Mia. But first, a much loved Christmas carol, once in Royal David City.
We're delighted to share a tribute by the actor, author and comedian Graham Garden OBE to our much-loved and greatly missed friend and supporter, Tim Brooke Taylor. Hello. Well, this is going to be a strange Christmas in so many ways, isn't it? Uh, normally you'd be enjoying your carol service in the splendour of Wellington College, but as it is, you're enjoying it in the splendour of your own homes. And... Uh, there's another difference, of course. We no longer have Tim Brooke Taylor with us. It was a, a great shock when we lost him earlier this year. Uh, I first knew Tim when we met as students at Cambridge, and it struck me that, in fact, we worked together every single year from that day forward, either on the radio or television or on stage. And he became a big part of my life, and I, I miss him terribly. And he's very sadly missed by everyone who worked with him too, because he was loved in the in the profession. And he's missed by his audiences who, like you, I'm sure, always found him absolutely adorable. He was the most lovable performer. And he had a very generous heart, as you know. He spent a lot of time and gave a lot of his energy to uh, supporting the, the hospice, raising funds and uh, opening the charity shops and... Uh, it's a shame that he can't see it now that it's open. He would have been amazed and delighted to see it now. And uh, what a wonderful place it is to bring comfort and peace and even joy to those who need it. But uh, though we missed him, life goes on and uh, your carol service awaits. Um, a strange Christmas. I hope you can make it as good as you possibly can. And let's look to the future and perhaps a better new year. In the meantime, enjoy your carol service and Merry Christmas. Next, the Tamasis Chamber Choir, directed by Louise Rappelmoor, performs O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Now the much-loved actress and Thames Hospice ambassador Sue Holderness reads Mistletoe by Walter de la Mer. Mistletoe by Walter de la Mer. Sitting under the mistletoe, pale green fairy mistletoe, one last candle burning low, all the sleepy dancers gone, just one candle burning on, shadows lurking everywhere. Someone came and kissed me there. Tired I was, my head would go nodding under the mistletoe, pale green fairy mistletoe. No footsteps came, no voice, but only, just as I sat there, sleepy, lonely, stooped in the still and shadowy air, lips unseen, and kissed me there. Each year we're thrilled to have the company of Director of Music James Manwaring and the Windsor Boys and Girls Schools for our Christmas Carol Concert at Wellington College. Whilst we haven't been able to host it this year, we're delighted to have the company of the Windsor Boys School Orchestra and Choir for this special Light Up A Life event. They perform their first Christmas carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs> we would like to welcome British actress Claudie Blakely, best known for her role as Emma Timmins in the BBC drama series Lark Rise to Candleford. Claudie reads 
I Will Light Candles This Christmas by Howard Thurman. I Will Light Candles This Christmas by Howard Thurman. I will light candles this Christmas, candles of joy despite all sadness, candles of hope where despair keeps watch, candles of courage for fears ever present, candles of peace for tempest tossed days, candles of grace to ease heavy burdens, candles of love to inspire all my living, candles that will burn all the year long. Now I'm very pleased to introduce some of our faith and community representatives who have come together to share their message with you all. In times like these, with this global pandemic, we remember our interconnected world in all its hurting and in all its hoping. We give thanks for all healthcare professionals everywhere and for NHS for their skill under pressure, for their compassionate care and support. We give thanks for all key workers in schools and in shops and in all other essential services, serving and supporting our communities come what may. We remember those people who died this year those people who are bereaved and all whose bereavement was further complicated by the pandemic restrictions. Times like these have affected all of us, our way of living, working, relating and being. We remember those who have especially struggled with loneliness and depression. We celebrate our local community in every family and every household this year for every ounce of resilience and for every act of kindness. We give thanks for 33 years of hospice care at Pine Lodge in Windsor, for all staff and volunteers, for every patient cared for and every family member supported. In this significant year, we give thanks for the way Thames Hospice has responded to new challenges with skill and compassion to all those people in its care. We rejoice at the new home for Thames Hospice at Bray Lake, for every contribution which made this happen, for all those people who will be cared for and supported here. Thames Hospice cared for Lily and Mia's mother Lisa until her passing in December 2019. Many of you may recognise this wonderful family who fronted our Raise the Roof fundraising campaign last year to complete the build of the new hospice. Our children and families team continue to support these wonderful girls to help them through their loss. Lily and Mia wrote a poem entitled Remembrance for their mummy, which they perform this evening for us. Remember it. In such a fickle time, it is easy to forget. Forget the love, joy, laughter and in between. But today remember, hold tight, hold close, hold dear. Never let the memories escape. Once in a while you can daydream about what it was and smile. Hold tight, hold close, hold dear. The people that once was, when you remember, you carry them in your spirit. Hold tight, hold near. The memories of yesterday. Remember, today we pay tribute to our Lily, our mum who continues to bloom and blossom in our hearts as we choose to always remember her. We love and miss you daily. We hold tight, we hold near, we hold dear. The memories of your love and laughter we remember you. Now the Windsor Boys Orchestra and Choir, directed by James Manwaring, next perform the much-loved Christmas carol, O Come All Ye Faithful.
In 2020, in times like these, every picture tells a story. The pictures and images of 2020 tell their stories. COVID-19, the worldwide pandemic, the UK hit hard. Healthcare professionals in hospitals, hospices and care homes caring for those infected, not without cost to themselves. Lockdown, workplaces closed, schools closed, shops and restaurants closed, working from home, homeschooling, shielding, self-isolation, social distancing, masks. Groups and gatherings limited, visits to loved ones prevented, weddings postponed, funerals restricted. But then stories of hope and courage, emergency services, key workers, acts of kindness from friends and neighbours, Captain Sir Tom Moore walking, people inspiring hope and courage in others. Every picture tells a story and every story has an ending. In this final month of 2020, we remember all those known to us who have died. Some have died from COVID-19. Some have died from other causes. All have lived and have loved and are missed by their nearest and dearest. This year, the endings to the stories were adversely affected by public health requirements people unable to visit those being looked after in places of care, people unable to regroup and to gather at funerals, people unable to give or receive the support that was needed. The stories have ended, but the stories are about people and those people have names. In this Light Up A Life event, you can say the name of the person that you are remembering just now. At Thames Hospice, in addition to the people we have cared for until their ending, we remember fondly the names of our colleagues who have died this year. Nurse Carolyn Shaw. Operations Manager in the Distribution Centre, John Suggett. And a long-standing supporter of Thames Hospice, the actor, comedian and broadcaster, Tim Brooke-Taylor, OBE. Every story has an ending, and in life, every ending is a new beginning. And with each new beginning, those stories are remembered and retold as our lives continue and as our lives write new chapters and new stories. This year, with thanks to the amazing generosity of our local community, Thames Hospice made a wonderful new beginning when we moved in October to Bray Lake. Now we are ready for the challenges that future years will bring. Now we can care for even more people than before. Now we have this beautiful new setting from which we serve our local community with compassion, ambition, respect and excellence, with care. And Thames Hospice is dedicated to caring for people in their endings and supporting their loved ones towards new beginnings. Every picture tells a story, every story has an ending, and in life, every ending is a new beginning. Our next very special guest is award-winning actor and documentary maker and Thames Hospice supporter, Ross Kemp, who reflects on this year in his own words. My name is Ross Kemp, and I'm delighted to be part of Thames Hospice's special Light Up A Life service and join you this evening to celebrate the work of our local hospice and to remember, reflect and rejoice the lives of our loved ones. This has been a tough year for the nation. The coronavirus pandemic has affected every one of us in some way and sadly taken the lives 
of thousands of people, both young and old. Many of us have experienced loss in this challenging year and have not been able to reflect and remember the lives of loved ones lost in the way we would want with friends and family. I think it's fair to say that you are watching this wonderful service tonight because the work of Thames Hospice has touched you in some way. I am deeply proud to support the hospice during a very significant year. The hospice faced increased demand for its community and inpatient services during the pandemic and had to significantly increase capacity to support some of the most vulnerable patients with COVID-19 on the inpatient unit. And of course, in October this year, my friends at Thames Hospice moved to their new state-of-the-art facility by Bray Lake. The new hospice means that they will be able to continue to care for and support even more local families during these current challenging times and for generations to come. I applaud and thank all the staff and volunteers here at Thames Hospice who have been absolutely incredible throughout these difficult times. And finally, a big thank you to every one of you for your unwavering support of Thames Hospice. Your local hospice needs you now more than ever. Please give what you can to help the hospice continue to give light in darkness and care and dignity to families in need this Christmas. May I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and happier times in 2021. This time last year, we were at Pine Lodge in Windsor. A special candle was lit during our final Light Up A Life event there. And now here we are at the new hospice with that very same candle where the flame of compassionate care continues. And we invite you to light your own candle to remember, reflect and rejoice the lives of our loved ones no longer with us, but always in our hearts.
thank you so much for joining us at Light Up A Life 2020 and we hope that it has been a special and significant occasion for you. If you are able to support us, you can make a donation at the link below. Season's greetings and our best wishes for 2021 from all of us here at Thames Hospice.